Hey everyone, just want to encourage you to find us on your listening platform and give us a rating. Anywhere you listen to that has a rating system, go on over and give us a rating and maybe leave us a review. Let us know your thoughts. These ratings really do help. Thank you so much for listening. On to this week's episode. Yo, Eddie. Hey. So it is just you and I today and... uh... We just came back from Comic-Con, and now we're going to go camping this weekend. So how about we just keep it uh, light and breezy today? Okay. Sounds like a plan? Sounds like a plan. All right. So do you know what we're going to talk about? Uh, Not 100%. No. No? All right. Well, you clearly don't do any show prep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, uh, well, I guess it's a surprise for everyone, but let's just say we're going to keep it in the Halloween season theme, and uh, today we're going to be talking about Hollywood's horror reimaginings, and what does that mean? Well, you'll find out. I'm Rolando. And I'm Eddie Z. And this is Remakes, Reboots, and Revivals. An original podcast. About unoriginality. Unoriginality. That's right. So it's just me and Eddie today. Nicole's not in. She is, I think she says she's in uh, New England or something. Looking at the fall foliage, I assume. Or it could be work related. I don't remember what it is. But the point is, she's not here today and it's just Eddie and I. We were going to talk about One Piece, but unfortunately, our guest isn't available until next week. So we'll have that one slated for you guys later this year. Uh, Before we go into today's episode, we have a quick announcement to make. Our friend Jane from the Thomas Edison Film Festival is inviting our listeners to come check out uh, Thomas, the Thomas Edison Film Festival's celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, They will be showing the films The Eye Begins in Hand and Free From Fear, as well as Guadalupe Maravilla and The Sound of Healing. And No Place. Uh, All these films are made by Latino filmmakers. And uh, this is in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. That is going to be on October 21st at 7 p.m. at the Thomas Edison Film Festival. Uh, Once again, that's Saturday, October 21st at 7 p.m. at the Thomas uh, at the Hoboken Historical Museum. Uh, unfortunately, Eddie and I can't go. We'll be camping this weekend. But, uh, you know, if you show up, say hello to Jane for us. And uh, I think we are ready to kick off the episode. So, Eddie, I want to name three movies. Can you name, like, their original counterpart? Ready? Okay. Okay. Happy Death Day. Groundhog's Day. Yeah, Groundhog's Day. And uh, what about Freaky? Uh, Freaky Friday. That's Freaky Friday. And now Totally Killer. Well, that's a combination there. Oh, what do you think it's a combination of? I think it's a combination of um, Back to the Future meets Mm -hmm. Scream. And you say that why? Because it's like a slasher flick? A slasher flick. um, It does, you know, not to give anything away, it does have some interesting twists and turns. That reminds me of Scream. Mm-hmm. And then you have that time travel element that was, uh, I thought was going to be dumb, but it actually um, seemed very, uh, it worked. It worked. It worked. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason I guess I wanted to do this episode was because I, we saw this film, I think last weekend, over the weekend. And uh, it just sparked this idea because, like, all three pictures are related to Blumhouse Productions. uh, And all three pictures kind of are, like, all these reimaginings of uh, of these, like, kind of stories. A lot of us as, like, you know, media enthusiasts and, like, film goers, we, we know these stories, right? So Groundhog Day, it's a simple premise. It's kind of in as of late has been kind of reused as like a tool which is a, this idea of a man who relives the same day over and over and over again until he could finally break the spell and 
you know, Groundhog Day was turned into a musical. We actually had a chance to see that musical. Yeah, we did. And uh, I liked it, but it didn't last too long on Broadway. And uh, our friend Mackenzie Green, she was on a podcast and she mentioned how she thought that the musical itself was kind of in the wrong time period. By which she means it's just like had to come out just after the pandemic. This idea of a man living the day over and over and over again is something that we all could have resonated with because we were doing that during the pandemic, right? When we're just hiding out in our homes. So when you think about it in that way, it's just like, oh, this musical could have been great uh, if it had just come out like maybe a year or so later. Anyway, uh, but yeah, but Happy Death Day kind of takes that like kind of idea of someone living a day over and over again, uh, but it's said they're introducing like a kind of a slasher element into it in the in the way that a main character, she's being uh, hunted down by this killer who is every, every time she dies, she wakes up to the beginning of the day and she's trying to solve the mystery of who is this killer and why are they targeting her. Uh, and that was the first film that we saw. That one came out in... Yeah, that one came out in the year 2017 can you believe 2017 wow and uh yeah i remember thinking what a fun movie i i I didn't think you could put these two genres together not genres but these two types of stories together and have such a like a fun piece right uh i don't know do you remember your first time when you saw this movie um no i i really i know i enjoyed it i enjoyed the uh just the performance of of the main character and um the main character she was jessica roth i've never seen her in anything else but she plays Teresa, and uh a tree so i was like just uh just really not impressed by her just her performance and how she kind of rolled with the punches how she was that kind of like um just kind of like almost the action hero mm-hmm. in that sense mm-hmm um no it it was a very much a fun movie i like the mystery behind it um i i would have not done with a sequel even though it was kind of kind of fun to revisit this movie yeah so there was sequel the sequel which is happy death day to To you right and that one came out the following year 20 uh, oh no it was announced the following year it came out in 2019 yeah and Yeah. yeah i agree uh the sequel i don't think was needed i still it wasn't I didn't like hate it. I didn't right? hate it either. It definitely solved like w- what was happening, like, like the mysteries uh-huh. that were happening in the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, that I would have been fine without too. Yeah, not I, knowing. I agree. Um, but hey, okay. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think we needed like a sequel to kind of explain why she's stuck in this time loop, but. They explored it, and, uh, you know, it came... I think it was, like, mixed results. I, I enjoyed the film, but I didn't love it as much as I loved the first one. And I think one of the things I loved about the first one was this... How it felt... It felt fresh, right? Like, it just felt original, despite the fact that, like, this is a plot that we've seen before, specifically in Groundhog Day. So... I, I I just remember thinking it's just like wow this is like this is crazy I can't believe that they made this movie and they made it so uh, like fun, uh, but then it was uh, a few years later in 2019 when the new movie came, uh, I'm sorry 2020 when a new movie came out and that was called Freaky it's also by Blumhouse Productions and uh, this one features Vince Vaughn as a killer now Freaky as you mentioned is based off of Freaky Friday so. Uh, Eddie, do you remember the plot of Freaky Friday in a uh, summary? Well, mother Freaky and, Friday. Yeah. Mother and daughter kind of at odds, kind of total opposites in in some ways. Um, kind of like make a statement like and leads into like like a changing of souls that when they switch bodies. Yeah, so it's a body switch comedy that ha- that is mother's a mother and a daughter switching place and having to live each other's lives for, is it just a day or is it like a few days? I don't remember. I think it's a few days. I think it's like it's a few days also. Day. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's like an old movie. It got remade in the aughts by Lindsay Lohan with Lindsay Lohan, Lohan and, and Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Lee Curtis. Uh, and it was quite popular, right? I haven't seen the remake to be honest. I've only seen, seen the remake. No, I've only seen the original one. Cause these have played a lot on Disney channel. Oh my Weirdly. God. Right. Uh, so if they ever, if I say if we know 
it's down the line when they will remake Freaky Friday, probably on like Disney Plus. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch it, and we'll cover it on the podcast. But yeah, Freaky takes that kind of idea, but in this one, it's like this like nice girl switching bodies with this serial killer played by Vince Vaughn, and uh, Vince Vaughn, now the serial killer who is inhabited by the the sweet teenage girl, kind of has to deal with what does it mean to be like this a big hulking kind of clumsy man and uh the serial killer now in the body of a young girl can now go off and commit crimes as a young child as a young woman and uh be not the suspect right it was kind of silly it was definitely irreverent and uh i remember when we saw this one it wasn't it didn't hit as well as happy death day did to me well i mean what do you why do you, why do you think that is? I don't know. I think there were kind of some beats missed in this one. Um I just I kind of didn't connect with uh the 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 serial killer uh serial killer being inhabiting the body of of the high school student. Mm-hmm. It just seemed mean girlish and heathers together. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and because she goes on a murder spree as a, yeah, as a teenager yeah. now. Yeah, Which, or she, or she begins. I, I don't, I don't, I don't recall if she killed anybody. No, within no, no. that body. And she killed people at the party, and I think she killed one person at the high school. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, just what there were certain things that just weren't memorable about that. Yeah, but yeah. Vin, Vince Vaughn's performance, though, um, uh, he's just funny. Period. Mm-hmm. So there were there were just moments where it was very hysterical. Yeah. I think for me, one of the issues I have with this film might be that, like, where Happy Death Day, I don't think it needed to explain anything to me. I, I didn't need it to explain to me, like, why is this girl, this young woman, traveling through time uh, or, or repeating the same day over and over Trapped again. Trapped in a time loop. Yeah. Like, in this film, I needed some explanations. The main explanation being not why did they switch bodies, but, like, what happens now to this girl? Because, like, she, I mean... Physically, she committed these murders, if not her, but still, she physically did. So, like, who who gets punished for that? Did they explain that? I don't think they explained it. That's why I feel like a lot of the evidence to this were... I just can't recall if... if on this, yeah, I can't recall it. Yeah, yeah, it was... This was not a... This was just... This one was weaker. Out of right now, this trilogy of horror reimaginings, this has been my least favorite. Uh... Oh, I, I, do I recommend it? If people ask, it's just like, you know what? It was fine. Like, Vince Vaughn was actually shockingly, like, really, really uh, charismatic in the film when he took over the the girl's, like, soul, right? Like, I think that's where the best comedy came from. Like, him pretending to be, like, a woman in this, like, man's body. And it was, it was, I thought it was... It, those parts worked, but, like, as a whole, the film itself didn't. Uh, and, uh, but, again, what I found interesting, though... I will say was just like, oh, I do like this like kind of slasher element being introduced to this again, classic story we know, the body swap film. Uh did you expect there to be another one? Like another type of like these classic movies being like reimagined as like horror films? Uh yes, I do. You you did. Yes. At the time when we saw Freaky. Yes. Which one Wait, like, wait, oh, you're you trying thinking? to say like these ideas? Yeah. Yeah, the whole body swap thing? No, no, no. Not uh, necessarily. Like, I meant like a classic movie that we all know, uh, uh, but like reimagined as like a horror film. Okay. No. No. Not so you per just, se. Like, no. Yeah. Like. Not per se. Okay. Yeah. I because this uh, we saw this during the pandemic, so I I, I necessarily wasn't thinking that this was going to be a continuing trend, especially because. Uh, Freaky didn't perform as well as Happy Death Day did in the box office. Uh, Freaky had a budget of six million. It only took in eighteen point one million, so that's like three times its cost. Sure, but you also got to keep in mind though the film also did come out during the pandemic, so that could have been a reason why it was hindered. Uh, you know, we'll we'll never know. As opposed to Happy Death Day, that one had a budget of four point eight million, and it took in a hundred and twenty five million, which is bonkers. Right, yeah. but it was a fun movie. I understand. It's a fun like, movie. I mean, the cast was just really. I found like the. Um, 
enjoyable to watch, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. And I, I, I just didn't feel that. It just didn't. The elements weren't there for, for Freaky just as well. All right. Let's flash forward now to 2023, uh, where we now get this new movie called Totally Killer. And Totally Killer is, as you pointed out, a film that kind of blends Back to the Future, right? So we have mm-hmm. someone who's out of time in the past. Uh, and uh, in this one, they introduce a, a horror element as a slasher flick. Someone is, she's trying to solve the murders of these high school students from the 80s in order to prevent the death of her mother in the present. Yeah. Right? And, uh, at the same time, she's also trying to figure out how to get back home. That's that race against time to get back home before she's stuck here permanently, which I think was an element also in Back to the Future. More importantly, to try not to mess up time so much that she won't exist. Similar in that in that idea. Uh, well, yeah. So, it, in yes, I, I know that in the story, and once again with with time travel, it all it gets all messy, messy. Yeah. So I I know when that question came up, when she actually when it has that meta moment where it where it's like. I mean, throughout the whole movie, she's asking everybody, did you see Back to the Future? Yes. Did you see Back to the Future, right? So she keeps saying that. And then the f- the, the the person that becomes her ally who helps her, who the person who originally built the time machine or came up with the idea of the time machine, she, like, lets her know, like, when the question comes up, if I don't do this, will I disappear? Will I fade away, like, in Back to the Future? And uh, so supposedly the idea is that she wouldn't. She just wouldn't be that person. Mm-hmm. So that should be returning to. So I just found those. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, interesting. I think the added elements of like trying, to, they gave for this story, like they gave us some stakes in the fact that like we early and guys, this is your spoiler alert warning. Now I, I recommend you checking out this film. I think it's absolutely fun. It fits the holiday season right now. That is Halloween. And uh, it, it's just so – it's such an enjoyable film. I, I, I Worth checking out. So pause, watch the film, come back and listen because uh, we're going to spoil some things. But uh, that was your warning. Yeah, I think my favorite parts about the film, though, was kind of how it kind of worked in kind of uh, calling out kind of Back to the Future's flaws. When you really think about Back to the Future and its flaws – uh, not necessarily as a film. I'm talking about its flaws in the logic. Uh, I think this film tries to kind of counter those flaws in a comedic form. So one of the things that comes to mind is like this idea of, oh, she can't like when they explain how time is like a river. So uh, like any anything that happens in the past isn't going to have like a direct reverbication in the future. Instead, it's going to create these like ripples that are kind of like uh, oh, what are those called? Those uh Mandela effects. Yes. Right. And uh, that's kind of how they're explaining how like things are happening simultaneously. Cause we're seeing two time periods, right? Unlike in back to the future where we just stick to the one time period in this film, we see both the past and bits of the present as it undergoes these big changes based off of uh, our main character played by Kieran Shipka, who, you know, she was Sabrina in, 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 the Chilling Adventures of, of Sabrina, Sabrina, which we covered very early in our podcast career here. Uh, but any changes that she makes is having ramifications in the present, but they're not felt per se as much as they are become like kind of these weird whispers. It's not until the very end, which is where I find funny, where uh, she has now stepped into this brand new life. And luckily, her friends from the past w- thought ahead to like kind of leave her like a journal with like these are the major changes that we assume have happened to you. Yeah, and now she's able to just kind of play catch up, which I thought was funny. I you know one of those like jokes that worked. Yeah, in my it's opinion, something that Marty McFly did not have. Yeah, when this he, the- when he cur- when he changes everything and he ends up in kind of like the perfect timeline, uh, it all the things that have transpired he wasn't part of. Mm-hmm. Not really. And the doc should have known this. Like, he should have at least foreseen that he should leave him like a journal being like, this seems like a major life change. Uh, you know, like, 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 
I don't know, like in um, I'm thinking now to yeah, the Spider Man movies, uh, the Spider Verse ones, uh, where they think of like these canon events, right? So like I think on some level, like you should know, it's like this seems like an important thing I should write down just in case. You have a brother now, <laughs> you know. You won the lottery. I don't know, whatever it may be. Uh so that's one of the things I actually I enjoyed in this film. Outside of the comedy, I think the comedy in this show, in this movie, was so sharp. Uh, kind of criticize not criticizing, but like kind of point, uh, making poking fun at the '80s and how wild of a time they were. Like, uh, there's like this recurring joke of the character. Uh, what is her name? Uh, she is Jamie of Jamie going to the school and giving these elaborate backstories about why she needs information, not realizing that the receptionists don't care. There's not this is. Pre nine eleven, they just like give you any information you ask and no questions asked. Uh, I thought those were like funny moments. Yeah, the yeah. Ki- the mom smoking cigarettes in her s in her station wagon with yeah. like the two infants in the back seat. I thought that was another funny joke, and how problematic the way people spoke in the eighties and yeah. treated others was another great call out in this film. That was just, it was just funny. Like they did it in a way that was not complete. It didn't. It wasn't a, uh, the jokes weren't completely like kind of shredding the eighties. It was more like just poking fun of like my the times the have really changed. Times, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Any what's it called? Anything that stood out for you? Well, so so similar to Scream, um, and even probably later on the 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 sequels to Scream is, um, so so we know that the connection to the serial killer and to the main character has to do with her mother. Right. Well, her, her, the serial killer had sh- had killed three of her mother's best friends. Mm-hmm. Right. And then she thought she was going to be next. All right. Um, so this is a teenager that turned into woman who survived the horror of this and prepared herself to the possibility that um, that one day that she would have to face off um, with this killer. Mm-hmm. So you get to see her fighting back. Mm-hmm. You know, being prepared. Like she prepared. She, she took the she took the survival skills. You know, so we kind of see that whole final girl fight mm-hmm. uh, between um, her and the slasher. That, that was and a mother. also has transferred this information to the daughter. So uh, there's a scene where the the daughter Jamie, the main character, says, "Yeah, I've been taking defense courses ever since I was like a toddler." Mm-hmm. You know, like something to that effect. Um, so it has that element of that the final girl is not um, helpless, helpless in yeah. a sense, but she comes with her own arsenal of skills um, that she's ready to use. Um, and that the the person that becomes her ally is her best friend's mom from the past, mm-hmm. too, that had started out building the time machine. Yeah, which is. And then her daughter <laughs> finishes up at a science project, like finishes it. At a science project, but I found so weird. It's just like it's such a a it, MacGuffin it, in it, it. Yeah, no, or it's it just it's just like a random thing. It's like oh yeah, oh so I'm like working on this time machine as mm-hmm. my as my science as project. project. It felt so Disney Channel original <laughs> movie. Like it was just like it was like no big deal. Just uh, yeah. I'm just working on this time machine. This is like oh just working on this time machine like all high school students do, right? But she was working off of her mom's plans and. Uh, it was because the killer had stabbed the machine. That's what conducted enough energy for her to travel back through time. Yeah. There was also another like throwaway line that just is, it makes no sense, but like they say it with such conviction and that you don't even think about it, but it's just like, oh yeah, it needed Wi-Fi too. So that way you can know where you are in time. It's just yeah, like the GPS. Wh- what? Yeah. <laughs> that makes, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Movie was still, I think this, you know what I liked about this movie much like, uh, Happy Death Day. It was just silly. It was kind of just silly fun. Uh, like one of the scenes that comes to mind in in this new one, uh, ha- and Totally Killer was the dodgeball scene, right? Yeah, like, just I yeah, because I grew up also with dodgeball, and yeah. you forget how violent it is. I'm assuming that's just a sport that no kids really need to learn because what is what what are you learning with dodgeball? Were you bad at dodgeball growing up? Uh, uh I think I was in the middle. Oh, in the sense of that, I got a couple of hits, but I knew by mid-game 
I was going to be down soon. See, I was big. I was, so I, uh, I was always like a big target. Yeah. I would be one of the first ones out and stuff. Yeah. That, that talk about repressed memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I watched this was, movie. Uh, uh, the other way that I think you're right, because th- this film does hearken to scream at times, is we had two killers in this film. We had two killers in the sense that they were. That's a twist. Yeah. yeah that was. Uh, and once again, it, it's like a twist because yeah how they're two killers is a twist it, 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 and it's, it's played so, off of the time traveling aspect too yeah which i thought it worked i think by the end of it, it worked uh like i kind of i really when we picked this movie to watch i thought it was gonna be just like something be like haha no big deal but i kind of came out really like enjoying this film and i really really love i kind of hope this is a trend that we keep seeing but like these horror reimaginings for uh of like kind of these classic stories that we know um the one thing about this movie that kind of did drive me crazy was its timeline because since it takes place in the 80s, I think it was like 35, 36 years ago, basically my age. Uh, but like, she's like a 16 year old girl. That means like her, like her parents got together soon after college, but they waited a long time before they had, they had her. kids. Yeah. Like, yeah, that, like, that was, uh, that was weird because I was doing the math on this. It was just I was like, doing the math. Yeah, I was, it was just gay like, math while watching this yeah, movie. Yeah, it was like, just like so. Technically, her mom is this age, and she's sixteen. The parents had her then when they were in their thirties. Yeah, basically, in their 30s. which is normal. And there's which nothing totally wrong with fun. that. Yeah. Be- because it's so <laughs> the way the way they talk, it made it seem like. Oh yeah, I knew your dad in high school, but we never got together. And then we went off to college, and then we, college, came, back and then we college, came back together. Yeah. We got, we came back from college, then we like got together, and then then the thing was okay. Then the thing was, oh yeah, and then we went on this ride, right? This ride mm-hmm. at the carnival, and and then that's when. I got sick and I knew I was pregnant of you. Right. You know, that kind of thing. And then I'm just like, say, wait a minute. How old were they? Okay. So 36. They probably were. Okay. 20. No, they were wait, like, wait. I did the math. They were in their thirties when they would have had her. Cause she would have been thirties. Yeah. Okay. She would have been. No, cause All right. The, cause the mom All right. Then I was thinking something. too, you're 30 something years old and you're going on that fucking ride. Yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah. Thank God she got sick. Yeah. <laughs> no. And the other thing I wanted to point out though, was just like, I, see, as the more you think about these movies, like the more plot holes there are. But I think the big flaw here was picking the eighties. Not that's a flaw because I think it, it it did it wonderfully. But I think that for me the big flaw was just like, oh, that's like too too big of a like. There are now thirty years between the eighties and now, so it should have been a smaller gap. It should have been the nineties. But anyway, I digress. Uh, the other major issue I had though was because the theme park that they were in, that kind of is like one of the big important settings for this movie is a really popular place in the 80s. But by the time we get to the present, it's kind of decrepit and falling apart. 18 years ago, or 16 years ago, right, from when uh, our main character is born, I don't think it would have been, would people have been going to it already, right? Or not? Well, I, that's I guess my question. Like, yeah, would the theme park be I, yeah, I guess, I, I guess, like, don't to? don't look too hard. Yeah, I, yeah because that's, that's I, me overthinking. I, it. At the end of the day, I feel like it's like a place where, like, okay, what what do we got to do? Well, we can like, what are you doing tonight? Oh, well, the carnival's still going on. We can go mm-hmm. by the carnival, mm-hmm. hang out there. You know? Yeah. Uh, but no, that's clearly nitpicking, overthinking this film. I don't think you need to do that. Like, if you're just gonna look, if you're looking for a fun scary movie it's not scary it's really just a more of a thriller yeah. uh but if you're looking for something to just really set that mood for october uh, i highly recommend this film uh just wonderful performances i think the writing in this movie uh was just kind of really sharp and just really really yeah, it witty. clever like it, it felt it had like elements of like almost mean girls by which i mean like the jokes were just kind of like not like at points in the movie the jokes were kind of just like nonstop. Like they were like three jokes in a row. Very Tina Fey ish. Yeah. Right? Uh, the ones that come to mind are like when they were talking about the the girls were all together just talking about the 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 haunted like the House of Mirrors or something, and like how one of the girls gives performs blow jo- oral sex. Blowjobs. Yeah. Yeah. She gives blow <laughs> blowjobs. Yeah. But like the jokes were just coming in so rapidly, I had to like go back and like catch them because they were just so good. They were like it, it was just a funny funny film <laughs> when they use her as a bait and she was like i'm coming in i'm giving some blowjobs yeah. 
<laughs> it's just ridiculous. It was just a silly movie. Highly recommend. Uh, and I, I think the other thing that I like about it, though, is just, like, that time travel element. I, I don't know. I'm really... I, I said this earlier. I'm really digging these horror films that are really, really uh, trying to just remix these properties that we have seen in the past. And uh, I told you when we, I planned this episode that you should try to think of something that you might pitch because I already came up with mine. Do you want to hear mine? Tell me. I think the next movie that can be done. So Blumhouse, if you guys are listening, of course they are, right? <laughs> uh, here's my pitch. But I think what you guys should do next is like Footloose meets Slasher. And the way it's going to go is it's like a town in like middle America that has banned TikTok, like banned like social media apps on kids' phones, right? Because years ago, uh, when the app started like kind of blowing up, kids were doing these like silly dances and mysteriously getting murdered after their videos would go viral or something, right? So they were banned in this town, and it's kind of like uh, believed to be this curse. Uh, and now this new girl moves in from, like, let's say, L.A. or New York with her family. She still has dreams of being an influencer, so she's not going to delete her app. She's, in fact, by her bringing the app, she's like kind of reigniting something in everybody who starts doing these TikTok dances again. And now the murders begin again. And the town kind of believes it is, like, an entity out there. But she's just like, no, it's definitely somebody. And she's going to try to get to the bottom of it. That is my pitch. Footloose meets Slasher. What do you think? There's something there. I think there's something there. Thank you. There's something there. What's uh, Do you have one? No. All right. I was, I was also thinking. thinking. I was thinking about this. Um, because even the ones we were talking about, I was like, oh, it's been done. Yeah, well, I said been Herbie. Done. It's been done. Herbie, <laughs> Herbie Hancock? No. No. Herbie fully loaded. Herbie fully loaded. That sounds like a porno. <laughs> it's an innocent movie. It is an innocent movie about a talking car. Uh, no, it doesn't talk. It's just a buggy, right? Yeah. It has like it honks. Okay, that's it. also starring Lindsay Lohan. Wow. Oh well, that's the remake. That is the remake. I haven't seen the original. I only I only know of the Lindsay Lohan remake. Uh, but yeah, but then you were just like, that's called Christine, and you're like, oh, you're right. And then I was just like, what about Breakfast Club? And that kind of exists. That's uh, the, the faculty. The faculty, which is one of my favorite films, which I still will die if they ever remake it because I think it could make a great TV series, like a one season TV series. You know what? Give it to Mike Flanagan. Give it to Mike Flanagan because he makes some of my favorite horror things. We're watching The Fall of the House of Usher, and I cannot wait till we cover it on the podcast because it qualifies. There was a film from, I think, the 1950s that's apparently a classic. Did you know it was a classic? Which one? Wait. The House of Usher. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, you know of it? Yeah. Oh, I've never seen it. I'm actually looking forward to it because this show is so good. I'm looking forward to the movie, which apparently is also good. And I might read the short story that it's based off of. It's a short story. But you were thinking others? No? Nothing ever came to mind? Oh, no. I was thinking Pretty in Pink. Mm, okay. But pretty in Red. Pretty in like Red. A, there you go. Uh... A girl becomes psycho, kills her classmates, but then... That's Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> it's Carrie. Uh, they're out there. They're out there. Footloose is the closest one. You know what? Maybe I'll try to make that into a short film, and, and uh, maybe the Blumhouse production company will, will see it and be like, you know what? This is your chance, uh, and take it. Um, yeah. Why do you? Why do you think... Like, how do you think the studios came to decide, let's remix these stories with, like, a slasher element? Like, do you think it was, like, a happy accident? Or was there, like, some, I don't know, higher thinking that goes into the, the decisions of these films? It's... No, I just want to... No, I, I feel like th th there's just always, like... A, I think we do it all the time, too, when we, we see a movie. We mm -hmm. think, oh, how, can we, how could this be better? Mm -hmm. Or how about if we add, like, this color to it or change this change this up? Um, definitely, you have the time loop... You know, having a time loop um, has always been... It's used a lot. Yeah, it's this been idea used a lot of as repeat, of repeating the day. Yeah, like, I'm thinking um, Russian Doll... Palm Springs, yeah, like so, they're very popular so as of recent. Either you have like a comical aspect to it, or like uh, existential existence, mm -hmm. or uh, a kind of like there's a killer you need to kind of solve 
who the killer is by dying over and over again, you know, to try to figure out who the killer is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you definitely kind of have like those time loop things are like, okay, what's a new, what, what? So basically it's like, I wonder if it comes the, if the idea comes first, like just having the idea of the, the concept of either time loop or time travel or just like body switching. Yeah. Um, how can we like take this to another level? What has been done? What hasn't been done? Mm-hmm. Or what can we do better? Right. That someone else has tried. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Cause especially now I'm a teacher guys. I'm a professor. And uh, one of the things that I have been preaching in the class, which is, it's so boring. I think not boring, but it's like kind of, uh, I can't believe I say this, but like, you know how, like, I've been teaching the kids how like everything in Hollywood is just like mass produced and you can't, anything that we think is original is just kind of a rehashing of something else. Right. That's just a very common thing that I'm teaching them in this course, media and American society guys. And, uh, I think that's where I, I, that's why that's where the question comes from. Like, what do you think is the thought process that goes behind this? I don't have the answer. I have, uh, I have, an inkling that this was just th- that this type of film is kind of a happy accident. I think someone literally pitched, Hey, what if we do groundhog day with like a slasher element? And it, it was a success, a raging success based off of the box office. So the studio decided, okay, let's try again. What what's next body, uh body swap. Okay. There's something there. Didn't hit the mark. So instead of like going all in on the film, like, uh, uh, cause this was produced by Blumhouse television. I guess now they have a television branch in the production studio. Uh, it, it's now being distributed by Amazon prime. So less of a risk. And I think this, this story paid off cause I would have enjoyed to see this one in theaters. I don't know how you feel. Yeah. I would have liked it. Yeah. I, I think this one would have been a fun one to watch, yeah. especially cause it was so funny. I think calm for me, Comedy or horror are the two genres that I think I do enjoy seeing with an audience. Like when everyone's laughing around you, you laugh with them. Uh, I still stand by. I don't need to go to movies for everyone. This is just one of the ones that I think it could have worked. I would have enjoyed this in theaters. But yeah, that's it. I don't know. Anything else you want to say about these three films or this type of, uh, it's not a genre, but this new wave of like horror reimaginings. No, I think it's um, I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. More for like, well, like once again, anything like, you know, like just taking it to the next level, giving us something new, you know. Um, I mean, this mashup of time travel and slasher definitely created uh a new kind of funny horror uh to it. And, you know, he had that kind of like the element of like appreciate what you have because you never know when you're going to lose it, Mm -hmm. you know, and the second chance aspect, too. Yeah, I think that was the other core of the story that we didn't talk about. It was a mother daughter story. Yeah. Also, right, because (laughs) she comes to find out that her mother, who is in the present when we meet her, like one of the nicest, most respectful people. Yeah. And when we go to the past, she's like the queen bee raging bitch. Of bee. And she's so good. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's right. She's also the, she's a young woman from Cruel Summer, yeah. which I loved. That's another show, guys. I highly recommend the first season of Cruel Summer. It's so good. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, this is a, a mother daughter story. Uh, again, similar to Marty McFly and like his parents in Back to the Future. I yeah. think that's a, a, a it's a good way, but this one again, this one the stakes are different because in this one the stakes are she is trying to save her mother's life. That's why she if she didn't go back in time intentionally, it was an accidental thing. But while she's over there, she's just like, okay, maybe I can change the past enough to like save my mother, and that's that's where we are. Mm-hmm. I do kind of regret, not regret, lament that the villain, the, the main main villain of the movie. Don't say the villain though. The what? His no 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 who he is not who. Okay fine I won't even say why. Don't say. Okay I was gonna complain about something but 
it's it's fine. It's all good. Uh, yeah, guys, I highly recommend checking out Totally Killer. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And uh, once again, guys, come celebrate uh, Hispanic Hispanic Heritage Month, right? That's what it's no, called. We go Latino. Latino is Latino Heritage. I, I mean, we. I think most people are not preferring. Okay, Latino so Latino, Latino Heritage, Heritage, Heritage Month, Month. Uh, with the Thomas Edison Film Festival at the Hoboken Historical Museum on Saturday, and watch a selection of independent short films by Latino directors and artists, creators, creators. And uh, what time is that event? It's at seven p.m. On yeah. Saturday, will there be snacks? There's always snacks. They always usually have wine as well. Mm. Worth it, worth it, guys. Go check it out. Support my good friend Jane at the Thomas Edison at, uh, at the Thomas Edison Film Festival. And uh, guys, also, if you checked out Totally Killer, let us know what you thought. If you checked out Freaky or Happy Death Day, share your thoughts with us. Email us. Our email is remakes reboots revivals at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Instagram. Uh, our handle is remakes reboots revivals. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, which you probably didn't because Nicole wasn't here, but you know, throw me a bone here. <laughs> Leave us a rating on whatever device uh, whatever podcast streaming service you're using and uh leave us nice comments and stuff we love to hear from you and uh i think that's it that's it are you excited for this for the rest of october yes yeah. halloween is right around the corner halloween's right around the corner we I, got a couple of halloween parties yeah we, we got do. some costumes that we we're gonna do have take. costumes should i spoil it for uh, no. what i am no post them on inst- on on um yeah on our Instagram. All right, fine. We'll post them on Instagram. See what Rolando is wearing for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And uh, what else? Anything else? That's it. I'm looking forward to talk about Fall of the House of Usher. That much is true. That's a crazy show. I can't wait. I I'm st- I am I'm such a Mike Flanagan like fanboy. I'm still thinking about episode two. I know. We're <laughs> yeah, only I'm like still a- like <laughs> I'm still stuck on episode. <laughs> just like those images are still like in my head. It's good. It's a good show. Can't wait. So guys. Listen, because in a couple of weeks when we cover, we're covering it for the Halloween weekend. Uh, it's it's gonna go down. There's gonna be lots of spoilers, so this is your warning. Check out this show. It's gonna be a good episode because I also I have a feeling Nicole is gonna love this. I think she is a fan of Mike Flanagan now. So that's it. Well, Eddie, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're on part of the podcast. I know you're you're the new co-host. Yes. So. Uh, with that said, until next time, stay unoriginal. unoriginal.